Hey guys, today we are going to look at 10 new cards that have recently gone up in price. We will start with Coat of Arms from Exodus. Now this card has been reprinted a few times and it is slowly climbing because of Tribal. It goes with most Tribal decks and the fact that Commander 2017 is very Tribal themed, this card should continue to go up barring the reprint. It's also a very hard card to reprint because it kind of has to be in a commander deck or in a set with lots of the same. I love the card. I think it has a lot of potential for growth. Still, you can get it for about 5 to $8. It's a good price to buy in. It's one of the few cards, especially if you're going to get, I think, A for Distant, it was reprinted. Exodus, get the original edition. Always go with the original edition when possible, especially when it's an artifact. It does look a lot different, and that difference makes it more expensive. Now, the next card that we are going to talk about is also an artifact that sees some modern play. Ensnaring Bridge, which is a $136 foil. 8th edition, like 7th edition, so it used to be only 7th edition foils were very expensive, and 8th edition foils were not. Then eventually, 8th edition foils became expensive. So is that does that mean 9th edition is next? It honestly could be. I would not be surprised if a lot of the 9th edition cards went up in price. As more and more Magic players, as more and more new Magic players start the game, these old foils were very uncommon because they replaced the card. So if you had a foil braids, that doesn't mean that means you don't get a rare. It's not like today. And the foils, some people actually didn't like foils back in the day because they were accused of cheating. Remember, we were playing without sleeves. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but the sleeve industry, at least when I was in middle school, no one had sleeves. Or if they had sleeves, it was like penny sleeves. And we made fun of the person in the penny sleeves because like, why would you do that? The concept of magic being valuable I mean, I just no concept in elementary or middle school. In high school, kind of, but even then, we didn't play with sleeves. Staff of Domination, wow, this is a doozy because I own a lot of copies of this. I bought a lot of Fifth Dawn, but I sold it when it was not $22. And I actually own a foil copy too. Uh, back in the day, you had a infinite combo with the Priest of Titania from Urza Saga. So you get enough elves, and then you get the priests, and you go infinite mana. And then from this, you can do infinite draws and whatever. I mean, it's a one step. It is a one staff combo for victory. But overall, you know, I sold out of this kind of early. I was afraid it would be reprinted. It's a hard card to reprint when you take a close look at it. Because it all it does is take one mana generation, mana generating creature that can produce. You know, you have to pay one to untap it, and you have to pay four to or uh, free to untap target creatures. So you need five total. That creature has to just generate five mana, and you're good. Next, this is from Shadowmore. Very good against affinity if you can survive. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. You gain two life for each permanent destroyed this way at instant speed. So your opponent, boom, 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 puts out all their artifacts, and then you instant speed board wipe them while gaining life. Very, very good sideboard card. Also amazing card modern with so many different artifacts and enchantments. Uh, so ring. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. Pretty much all the artifacts do one thing, is to generate mana. You gain a lot of life, and you can do it at the end of turn, which is not something typical for white or even even green. Green doesn't have that many great instants. I remember this card being absolutely bulk, and I do own lots of copies of it. Not because I thought it one day would be good, it's because Shadow More. Like the key here is, if you fall in love with a, a set, just buy the set, open it. I'm in love with Eldritch Moon now. I like Liliana of Last Hope. I think she's very good. I think she will hold up. And as long as Death Shadow is not banned, and they have said that they're not going to ban anything or they're going to try to allow modern just to be modern, which means without Death Shadow banned, it's going to be the number one deck. And they would, the Death Shadow decks, 
many of them, including top players, prefer Liliana of the Last Hope over the Veil. That tells me that it's time to stock up on Liliana of the Last Hopes. Oh yeah, another card that has been steadily going up, it's been down and up down, is Anjani, Mentor of Heroes. It does have a token ability and the gain 100 life is kind of funny. So with Helix Pinnacle, actually it doesn't work with Helix Pinnacle, that you need mana, you need 100 mana to that, do that. Is there a card where you gain 100 life and you win the game? Is that Helix Pinnacle? I'm not sure. I think Helix Pinnacle is you need 100 counters or something insane like that. But Johnny, Planeswalkers are always good. Tutors are always good. There's actually, after Demonic Tutor, Demonic Tutor is EDH Gold. I own many, many copies of this, but I also sold and traded even more copies. Some of these cards, all you have to do is hold on to them, and they will just go up in price. Now, what do you look for when you're holding on to a card? It's random. When people tell you, oh, I'm really good at MTG Finance, that's not true. Like, generally speaking, you have no idea what's going to be reprinting, right? So I could be like, oh, Demonic Tutor is the best. We should all buy Demonic Tutor. And then all of a sudden, Demonic Tutor becomes like Soaring, and they print it every single Commander deck to the end of time. A lot of people, before Soaring was reprinted into Oblivion, they invested in Soaring. Because that's an EDH staple. But it turned out what happened was every single commander deck now has a so ring. And therefore it is not valuable in the least sense. Like, So you never know what they're going to reprint into Oblivion. You just don't know. Like Scion to your dragon. I thought that card was going to go up like just poof. But then they reprinted it. So it's going to go. It's going to drop down like a rock. But it will be a good card to pick up. Next, Elspeth Sun's Champion went down to about $5 and is now back to 10 I like Elspeth, and I made the prediction that to pre-order Elspeth, you see that little spike up and then the secondary spike? I had pre-ordered my, I don't know where the graph is, but I pre-ordered my Elspeth at $12.50. The MTG Finance community trashed me a lot. They were like, oh, six-mana Planeswalker, it would never happen, it would never happen. But I knew, I knew, and she dominated multiple Pro Tours. She was pretty much the uh, Gideon ally Zendikar, but back when it's slower. Because I said, huh, I playtested her. This is when I used to care more about MTG Finance. Now I just kind of look at it and say, hmm, do I like this card? All right, bye. Elspeth was a great card. Uh, she has everything in her toolkit, which would make her dominant as a one. If you want to play something at six, it better win you the game. Next, another Shadow Moor card. Uh, as I've said before, even in this same video, if you love a set, just buy the set and just put the, the bulk in like storage. Then one day, your Rune Halos and all your Shadow Moor cards and all your Devoted Druids and all this stuff, Blighted Fens, and they're like $5 to $10. And this one is $20 now. It was the definition of bulk. Look at that graph. During uh, before Born of the Gods, it was like fifty cents, maybe like maybe a dollar at most. So when you talk about this, it wasn't just this Rune Halo was fifty cents. It was like literally every card was fifty cents in Shadowborn. And then one day, boom, it hits. And if you're sitting on boxes and boxes of Shadowborn bulk, then you have play sets of Devoted Druid. You have play sets of the other cards that I've already made videos about. And you also have rares like this. Because these were bulk rares. Even if you wanted to give them away, no one would take them away from you. You couldn't trade them. No one's trading for them. So you just end up with a ton of rune halos. And one day they were $20. And it's like, oh, nice. Uh, Garuk Apex Predator. I like this one a lot. I like him. I don't know what happened to Garuk. I think he died or something. Or he got lost. It's unclear why, why he was replaced by Nyssa. I thought Garuk was a little more interesting as a character. I do like Nyssa, but she's kind of bland. Like, if I had to rank the Planeswalkers, I would probably say Lily 1. Mm, I don't actually like anyone else. 
I don't like Chandra that much anymore. I read that book, Purifying Fire, and it was a really bad book. Anyway, Garuk, I like this card a lot because he kills Planeswalkers <laughs> with a plus ability. That's only going to get better in time when we have more and more Planeswalkers. So at 7, the fact that it can just... I mean, it's so unlikely that you have three different players, you're a four-player game, that's how I play EDH, and no one has a Planeswalker. Next, we're going to take a look at Steel Overseer. This is a reprint of one of the core sets. I think it was like M... Hmm, sometimes I get confused. I think like M1314. And Steel Overseer was a very good card. It is $13. It is played in Affinity in the slower, more aggressive, or slower, less aggressive forms of Affinity because you're waiting for you to put counters on it. But it's also very good in EDH. Overall, these 10 cards are not surprising to me. They have a lot of long-term potential. I would actually... So you need... Like, before you buy a ton of one card, you just need to like it. All right? I've always said this. If you okay with a card... If you're excited that card is reprinted, so that means you can buy more of it, then I don't have any fear of the price going down because I will always enjoy that card. Filer is one of them. I kind of want her to be reprinted. She's a $12 card now, and if things go this way, she'll be $20 in no time, which is good, but also bad, because that means I have not been able to pick up any of her since she was $6, which has been some time. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.